Hello and welcome to another Workout Wednesday walkthrough. I'm Curtis Harris and this is week 52. And this week we're looking at some Nobel Prize data. We get a break from Superstore for a change, which is always fun and interesting and provides a different challenge that we're not necessarily used to. Uh, and has given us an interesting challenge to produce a timeline with data that doesn't tra traditionally support a timeline view. We are looking at data and dates that are aggregated up to the prize award level. Um, and what I mean by that is for every prize, Nobel Prize awarded, um, we have a winner and we have important dates for that winner. We have their birth date, we have their death date, we have the award date in pieces that we have to kind of bring together into a proper date format. And traditionally, if we were to build a timeline, what would be beneficial is if we had one row per prize per date, so we could kind of plot the common date field and just label the marks with the date types, you know, the award date, the death date, those pieces of detail that would normally be in a row. But Anne um, has given us the challenge to produce this timeline without reshaping the data into rows and keep it at the one row per prize award level. So I believe that's going to be the interesting challenge. Um, I don't believe it to be. It is. I'm already done with this. So I'm just going to walk you through how I got there. And I have some notable differences from Anne's solution. And I'm not still not 100% sure how she got there. Um, there's a few breadcrumbs that she left that that indicate that I did something very different. And while our final visualizations look the same, I am altogether certain that I didn't do the same thing she did. So I'm just going to walk you through how I solved this problem in a way and where I might be wrong still. Nonetheless, the final image looks similar and all the, the requirements are checked off. So to each their own. Anyway, let's get started. So if we scroll down and look at the challenge, you'll see this called out really clearly, no reshaping the data. So one challenge for you right off the bat, um, a few things, dashboard size, as we know, doesn't really matter till the end. Timeline showing birth, prize, death, or today. So a Nobel Prize winner could be alive or they could be dead. And we're going to show a different mark based on that happening. So if we look in this image here, we can see this prize winner is deceased, having a dark gray circle, and these ones with the Gantt bar shape are still alive. And their line goes right through the today reference line. So we have two different kinds of marks. If we look at the public viz, we could probably guess what's going on here. Um, if I click on the middle bar, I can see this Gantt bar shape. So I'm guessing this is a dual axis. Um, one of those axis be axes being a Gantt bar and the other one being a shape mark. Because We have circles and this Gantt shape. So that's probably what we're going to go with. Um, prize dates according to their category, that's easy enough. The line that goes from their birth date to today or death, um, I'm sure we will figure that out along the way. And the labels are interesting. Um, this below... The Gantt bar setup is interesting. There are also Nobel Prize winners who have won more than one prize. We want to just show the label because the label is at the level of the prize winner and birth date to death date or birth date to today. And if they have multiple awards, they're going to have multiple rows of data that have those same pieces. So we don't want to duplicate the label. We don't want to show extras. We're going to try to figure out how to aggregate those dates in a way that's supported by the label show. And then one last interesting challenge here is the sorting. Um, if you've never done this, this is always fun to try to figure out how to sort discrete dimensions or dimensions by alpha alphabetic data and numeric data and dates. So we'll have to do some field conversions 
in a calculation to get there. So let me walk you through what I did. So if I open up my solution, you can see uh, we're looking at something that looks very similar. There might be a few tiny differences just from looking at the image. Um, I think my labels might be slightly in a different spot than Anne's, but that's nothing to really worry about. They're still under the bar. I think my circles might be a little smaller. I think my Gantt bar in the middle might be a little thinner. Um, again, I'm not worried about this. I think it's all generally the same. My Gantt mark looks a little smaller than hers, where Anne's seems to line up with the tops and the bottoms of the circles, so I might just have a different um, icon in my shape directory. Same idea, really, so no big deal. So let's go through how we build this. <clears throat> and as I said earlier, I want to explain what's going on here. So if I look at the data, I can see this row here. We have the name uh, Jacobus. He was awarded the Nobel, P Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1901. He died in 1911. He was born in 1852. Um, like I said earlier, we don't have a common date field and we don't have three rows to signify these common dates. Um, if I were doing this for work and I had all the control and all that other fun stuff, I would probably parse this out into multiple rows per award. So this award for Jacobus would have one row for his award date, one row for his birth date, and one row for his death date. And we would normalize those into one common date field and just call it something like date and then tag it with what that date represents in its own column. So we could have date type and date and then just label things and use the date type as our shapes and colors and things like that. But we can't do that. So we need to figure out how to plot these dates on a plane or on our view here without a common date. Um, so what I did was actually translate these dates um, into deltas from today's date. So I'm, I'm using today, which is just a simple calculated field function. Um, the word today, open and close parentheses, and then I'm getting the difference in days from each of the important dates and just getting a delta. Um, and then once we have that number, we can plot those as measure values instead of plotting dates on an axis. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we have um, today, right, which is going to be dynamic. So this will update every single day on Tableau Public by using this today function. That's always going to pull the date, um, I believe, the date of the server, right? So whatever time zone or, or whatever Tableau Public is running on, it's going to pull today based on that. And I'm going to go ahead and say, give me the date difference in days between today and the birth date. And that will be um, just some number, right? I don't care what it is, but that's our, our first plot, right? That's our first point is the birth date. Um, we know that no date is going to appear before that, so that's the one we needed to get. And I needed to find um, four points um, to plot. Days since birth date, which will be the left side of our view. The days since award date, which is very similar. Um, we're just getting, getting the date different days from the award date. Um, award date also had to be calculated, if you notice over here in the gray. Um, and told us that we're going to assume for this exercise that every award was on December 10th. And the data that we were provided only contained the award year. So we had to actually build our date field by combining these strings, the string of the year and December 10th hard-coded for every row. That gets us our days from the award date, uh, days since death date, we're going to just do the same thing again difference between today's date and death date and then we have one more is today if alive so uh we're just going to plot 
today. Or we're going to plot a zero if the if the award recipient is alive. So we're going to go check. If the death date's null, then return zero. Um, the reason why we're doing zero is all the other measures, the day since death award and birth date are all differences from that date to today. And if those are still alive, then we want to reference today. And the difference between today and today is just zero. So that's why I'm plotting a zero and giving it a null if the award recipient is actually deceased. And from there, we can just plot those four values on our measure value shelf. Change this to a shape mark and give the measure name um, our shape. So if we put measure names on our shape shelf, we know if they're alive, we want this Gantt mark, which I just found on the internet somewhere and everything else was just a filled circle. So easy enough. And the way this is working, right, is nulls don't appear in Tableau. If I did zeros, I would get something on the today line everywhere. But when I make things null, it's easier to, to show and display, hide and display certain things that you want to be displayed. So this line here is a deceased award winner, but we don't have a mark at zero because I said just return null, um, which is return nothing if that award winner is deceased. What I also did to get the coloring right was just put the category on my detail shelf and you can actually assign multiple dimensions to color through this little function here. So if you click on the field to the left of the dimension, you can actually just say, assign another thing to color. And you can do this as many times as you want. It just gets a little tedious um, after one or two. And the way that comes through is Tableau will actually comma delimit those. So based on the position they're in on the marks card, um, the top one's your first color decision and the bottom one's your second color decision. If we go in here, we can see the measure name appears first. Um, day since birth date, we knew it was going to be gray, so I just assigned those all gray. Um, death date. And today it was all the darker gray. And you can't see it, but these are actually showing the categories in a comma separated fashion. So made it pretty easy. I can demonstrate this. If I move category up, that's going to change my colors up because category will now be first in line in the color decision tree. So uh, just kind of depends on how you want to, to do that. It is tedious work, so not the greatest thing to be doing. Um, so that th those are our circles. Um, and the only thing we need to figure out from here is days from the, the birth date to death date or today. So that's what we had plotted here. So days since birth date is what we had um, <clears throat> as our column or on our axis. So we want to go and narrow down that one mark the starting circle because we're going to build a Gantt bar. So if I took off the size of my Gantt, I would get nothing back because there's just this one little starting point here at their birth date. And what I wanted to do is find the difference between birth date to either death date or today. So similar calculation to all our other ones. We're going to take the day difference between birth date and if, if the death date is not null, we're going to say find the difference between birth date to death date. And if it is null, do today. So that'll give us a varying um, mark length or Gantt length per award winner. And then we can just simply plot that on our size shelf uh, for our Gantt bar. And that gives us that effect. So. Again, uh, easy enough. Once you kind of got the concept of I need to think of these dates as numbers and not dates, then it all became pretty easy. But it took me a while to figure out, like, how do I think about this challenge? Because I can't trend things. I can't plot dates. I have to plot numbers. And once I figured out I had to plot numbers, then it, it just kind of came, came into place, like how I should put this together. Um, 
numbers instead of dates and then use the actual dates in the tooltips so nobody knows any any of the wiser right they just see dates and a timeline and this is all enabled because we're not showing our axis if i were to show the axis it wouldn't make any sense at all okay so moving on um what else do we have to do the label i uh, labeled the gantt bar because if we go back to ANS, we can see that it's right in the dead center of the timeline for every award. So I knew I had to label the bar. And I did some of those same things. So on the label, I can go in I put the award winner's full name, their birth date, and then a similar calculation. So today, if they are alive, is on here. So if the death date's null, then I know they're still alive. I'm just going to show the word today, or else null. And if the author, or if the award winner is deceased, then we're going to display the death date. So this works on that. Like, if one's null, show the other logic that Tableau does. So one of these is always null. So I know that just one is going to get displayed. So I plot them next to each other. So Tableau will just force it into the same spot when the other one is null. And the trick here, it's really kind of a silly trick, is just giving a couple carriage returns. So if you just put this on the label shelf and couldn't get it below uh, the Gantt bar, it's really just hit enter a couple times and it'll move down. Or it won't, uh, what the hell? There we go. So that's kind of that, and then this helps as well. If you left this on automatic, it might not have worked. So I just made sure that Tableau always forced it to the center and to the bottom. And I said label all my marks and allow them to overlap. And this was also enabled by widening our rows. So if you didn't widen your rows, you'd be stuck with something that looked like this. Not looking very good. And if you just kind of widen them a bit, you'll get there. And I think that was about it. So, I mean, really not, not too difficult in a way. Um, we have December 1901. I forgot about these reference lines. Uh, today, I just plotted a reference line at zero and labeled it today. Um, that's one of the big differences I saw with Anne. So if we go to hers and I look at her reference line tooltips, I can actually see um, a date where mine just says zero. I'm, I'm hoping that anyone who's viewing this is just looking at the label of the line and going, all right, that's today, whatever, I don't care. Um, and Anne also has a date here. It says December 1901. Um, so I think somehow she's working with a true date axis where I'm working with a measure values axis because my December 1901 shows something completely illogical. Um, negative 42,750 days since today which is not going to make sense to anyone, but hopefully, again, they're just reading the label of the reference line and moving on with their day. So that's that. Uh, I don't think I really need to go over the filter sheet. It's basically just plotting out the category um, into columns and declaring your action filter. So you can click on these and see what's going on. Oh, and I forgot the, the sorting, right? Let's cover that really quick. So if we do sort by, I built a parameter, uh, just called it sort by, and gave it a list of one through seven, and then renamed it to what the user would see. And then wrote a calculated field called sort, and just went through the steps. So number one was alphabetic. And so I said, when the parameter's on one, then do nothing, just null. Um, and Tableau will default back to alphabetic sort. Um, and since I did this last, this was really easy because I already had all of these numbers built. I didn't need to really do anything with the dates at this point. I just needed to write out this case statement, and it was pretty easy. So um, when two was day since birth date, um, it was the oldest. And then the opposite of that was just throwing a negative sign in it. So 
oldest to newest, I just reversed it in Tableau's eyes, and it'll plot it um, in reverse order. Um, same thing here, day since award date and negative day since award date. And then this was the only weird one where um, day since death, because not all of the award winners were dead, um, I had to just give it a fake number. So something that realistically would never happen. Um, so if if the award winner was not deceased, they would just kind of float to the top in alphabetical order. And if they are, then all of those non-deceased award winners would just go to the bottom. And then the, the oldest, the deaths that are the oldest would be at the top. So that's kind of how this works. Um, if you need to sort fields based on dates and text and whatever else, you really just need to go through the exercise to convert them to numbers and you'll get there. Like I said, if I look at my sort on the full name, I'm sorting by that field we built in ascending order and aggregating it to the minimum. Um, just makes more sense than sum. And you'll see um, that kind of come through here. So if we do birth date, these are the old ones. Yeah, 1817. You are very old, sir. Um, birth date newest. We'll see like uh, Malala up at the top. It's just kind of thin. Um, oldest prize dates. Yep. It's pretty good. And death date. This guy's been dead for a very long time. And these ones are not dead, and this is how Anne's looked, is all the still alive people would be kind of at the top. So that's that. Um, again, hopefully you didn't bang your head against the wall too long for trying to plot these things as dates. Like I said, when we started the video, I have a couple um, clear errors in my eye. I think the solution looks exactly the same. I don't think anyone would know any different based on an image, but we're clearly doing different things here on these reference lines. And I think that's really the only way you would notice that anything's going on different between mine and Ant's solution. So hopefully this walkthrough of my solution helps you out if you're still stuck and we will see you next year. I'm excited to be a full-time member of the crew next year and, and get to work and give you guys challenges on a more regular basis. So, uh, be looking out for that and hope you guys had a great holiday and a happy new year. See ya.